All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another amazing conversation that we're going to be having today. I think we're all in this space of wanting to really work on our mindsets and just really get focused on like what we're wanting in our business and our careers. Um, Because it's crazy to think, Ashley, that we're only we're almost out of Q3. Uh, (laughs) We're almost out of Q3 of 2024. So that means we're four months away from 2025. So I think this is a great conversation for not only right now, but also for us to start thinking about how are we going to be setting ourselves up individually on a personal level or in a business level when it goes into 2025. So thank you to that for being a guest with me today. Ashley, I'm super excited to have this conversation. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited too. I feel like this is just so well-timed to your point. Like Set yourself up for success now. People yes. always try to wait until Monday, wait until the new year, wait mm-hmm. until something. And I feel like a game changer and people who are successful versus people who remain stagnant are that they, they just start where they are with yeah. what they have. Mm-hmm. And I think people are hungry yes. for change and hungry to feel better and really grow and be fulfilled. Yes. No, I agree wholeheartedly. I think that we're in this space now where we're like, okay, we, we're having to almost really truly, for lack of better wording, put on our true entrepreneur hats. It's not Absolutely. just coming easily. It's going to be digging in. It's an, into understanding what our goals are. It's into understanding like what we're really up to um, and being really intentional. So I'm excited about this. So I would love for you to introduce yourself and for anyone that's new to Ashley, this is your time to say, hey, this is why I'm so amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, my name is Ashley Shehab, and I am a certified life coach. I specialize in clarity, authenticity, and getting unstuck. I really believe that if something isn't happening in your life, it's because you are lacking clarity. Yeah. And I feel like that pertains to anything. It can pertain to your business. It can pertain to just, you know, your corporate career. It can pertain to dating, health, anything. You're lacking clarity. And usually that clarity is something within you that needs to shift. So I work with men and women. I work with teen girls. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people who are going through a major life transition, like a divorce or a health event and helping them to just get clear on what comes next. Coaching is very focused on meeting you where you are and helping you to move forward yeah. as opposed to therapy. That's more about taking you back to your past to help you to manage your present. Yeah. And I just love this. Like I am so passionate about mindset because I have seen how this will completely train transform your life in the most magical of ways, like ways mm-hmm. that actually defy logic. Yeah, no, it's so, what you're saying is so valid. And that's why when we first, so we connected on at a networking event and on here, I always say that we need to be out here networking, that it is a really great way to impact. Um, And that's why I think sometimes too, with like past, everyone just focused solely on social presence, but then never take the time to get out into their local communities so that they can meet. Um, some great people that either can be individuals you can collaborate with or your potential clients. Yes, you can have people that you can work with all around the world. But if no one in your local community even knows, like you're missing out on a really great opportunity. And um, when I was thinking about mindset and we're talking about like, like what are the things you're passionate about talking about? Mindset is so important. And I don't think that regardless if you're an entrepreneur or not, we're not always present to how this really leads, how we go after the things that we go after or do Mm -hmm. not even go after. Because if we don't even think that this is something that's possible, um, you'll do just enough. And then what happens is then you get the result that you really didn't want, but because you are self-consciously thinking it wasn't going to happen, that it just doesn't happen the way that you, you, you experience. So like, is that something that you see is very common for people that are? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We all are operating life where we are playing out patterns mm-hmm. and we have our own belief systems. Yeah. And we, those belief systems, a lot of times too, are completely subconscious. Like we have no idea 
what we're thinking and like what is actually like creeping in that is holding us back. Mm. And so I feel like we have to know what our kind of like energetic minimums are. Yeah. So that we can then move past them, move through them. Like if you set this goal of like, oh, I want to make $10,000 this month, but I've only ever made $5,000 and you don't really believe you can actually make the 10,000, you're yeah. going to hit the 5,000. Yeah. Like it's going to give you exactly where your energy is yeah. with everything. And this is so interesting because it's sneaky. Like yeah. I, doing mean, what I do, I have to do a lot of work on myself, obviously. Like yeah. I feel like I lead the way I go first so that I can show my clients where to go. And I've been shocked by the sneaky beliefs that I have that really operate under the surface and they do keep me from going on to that next level. Yeah. And I think that it's, and I think that when it comes to how, like it's about our triggers, because that is like what, happens is like we don't even understand that in order to get to that 10,000 there's something that we're going to be bumping up against which can then potentially be a trigger so like all of that stuff is really sustained like a little short story like I've had this thing like dating is interesting you know however I was like I've heard people say you know adjustments and all these different things. And a part of me was like, well, maybe when it comes to dating, I'm going to have to start dating someone that um, may have a little bit of different beliefs. And then last weekend I was in this place and I was just like, I, if that's what I accept, exactly. That's what I'll receive. And then I started being present to, if I only see X, then I'm only going to focus on X. Exactly. And if I actually see that, wow, there are some great guys that are out there that are this and other, they may not approach. And for anyone that's listening to this, don't think this is only about dating. This is about, this is about with everything. So I think again, when we, people listen to these conversations, they only look at it as a one area of their life thing. And reality, this is stuff that really shows up. And I've heard people say, how you do one thing is how you do all things. So if you say like, oh, there's no opportunities out here, there's no clients out here, all you're going to keep doing is looking at people that just can't afford your services compared to exactly. being in a space of abundance of like, like that, they, they, it may take work to find those clients, or maybe I might have to shift to be in front of those clients, but those clients are out there. It all depends on what you choose to focus on. And would you say that's something that comes in place when we talk about mindset? is on our focus all the time. I mean, it's really, I do a lot of work with my clients on their belief systems Mm -hmm. because we get so drilled down on our beliefs Mm -hmm. that we cannot see outside of those beliefs. And when we're drilled down on a belief, we're going to constantly be getting evidence to reaffirm that belief. Yeah. So if we say something to ourselves, like something that I had to work on around dating, but again, this can translate to anything is I used to say, there are no men in Dallas. There are no men in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And then I had a coach challenge me on that. And she's like, is that 100% true that there are no men for you in Dallas? Yeah. And I was like, well, I guess I believe that there could be one man for me in Dallas. And she's like, okay, then that's your belief. Like Mm -hmm. feed that. And just that shift completely transformed my dating life. Yeah. Or if you think about things like, okay, yeah, like there's, Oh, it's, there's so many people that do what I do. There's mm. like no one available to me. It's like, okay, is that 100% fact? Yeah. Like, what is it that you have that I don't have that you don't have, you know, like yeah. that somebody else doesn't have? Like, it's, it's really challenging these beliefs and understanding where they've come from. Yeah. Like, I really feel like our lives are kind of like a tapestry with all these different threads woven through them. So you could have a thread stemming from a traumatic event that happened with your parents or like a bad breakup or like a bad accident or something like that. And you could be like, oh, well, I've worked on that. Like I I went to therapy, I worked on that. But what you don't realize is that thread is tied to so many other things in your life. Like something that happened to you with your parents in childhood could literally be affecting your ability to make money now. Yeah. Everything is interwoven. Yeah. And I think if you 
really want to rise and have a limitless life, which I do, you do, yeah. limitless is my word, you have to go in and identify these threads and just untie them and yeah. untie them from your core so that you can be free. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I, some people don't like when I say this. However, this is my truth. I believe that entrepreneurship isn't difficult. What makes it difficult is all of the things that we experience that either says what's possible, what is not possible, how we view ourselves, what we think we can be, what we think we can achieve. That's why for some individuals, they can jump into it. Yes, they've had previous life experiences, but it's all, you know, it's interwoven. So like if someone's had specific skills, that soft skills that they worked on in like corporate America or just in life in general, it makes it a little bit easier for them to transition. However, they're going to have different things in their lives through the journey that's going to require them to grow. And the longer we avoid growing in that aspect, it makes it harder. And that's why even like when we think of direct sales, like some people, they'll jump from one company to the next and they think it's the company. And reality is like, no, you keep hitting the same thing. And instead you say it's the company instead of it being you. And it's okay if it's you, but what are you going to do to get a different result? So I think that that is something that how you said that is interwoven is thinking, okay, what, what are the truths? What are the stories in which I'm making up so that you can truly figure out like, how do you get yourself into the position to have the things in which you truly say you want? Exactly. And your analogy of like jumping from job to job and yeah. hitting up against that same wall. I mean, that certainly applies to dating as well. Yeah. It's like dating all these different guys, yeah. but you keep hitting that same wall. That wall is a wall that you put up. Yeah. And only you can take that wall down. And it does require time, energy, mm -hmm. intention, introspection. Mm -hmm. And it requires you to be different, do different, experience yeah. different perspectives. And I think a lot of times when we're entrepreneurs, we think like, oh, I have to do this all myself. It's like, no, you don't. Like when you actually have the team around you to offer you the other perspectives and make this easier for you, yeah. this is a game changer. Yeah. And hello, tax write-offs. Like yes. I'm often tax write-off for entrepreneurs because this is business coaching, entrepreneur coaching. Yes. And it's this is the kind of thing that makes or breaks a business. You can have every system in place. You can have all the education in the world. But if you're not growing and expanding, I feel like that is what will crush your dreams faster yeah. than anything else. A hundred percent. So I do have a question then. So... For those, that, and it leads perfectly into this. So for those who are not familiar with the term of a growth mindset, how would you best describe this? To me, growth mindset is being awake to life, all of life. It's really sitting in the driver's seat of your life and saying, okay, I am willing to look at all the things, including the things that I don't want to look at. Like I'm willing to look at my spending habits, even though I don't like money. I am willing to look at my dating patterns, even though I really just want to blame all the men yeah. instead of looking at myself. Like yeah. I am willing to actually own where I am in my life and be willing to just look at it. Like that yeah. really is the growth mindset. I, I will look at it yeah. because once you see it, you can't unsee it. You can't yeah. put it back under the rug. Like yeah. it's out now. So you have to do something with it. And it's not your job to necessarily didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. That's where I come in. Like this is where teams of people to help you can come in, but it is your job to look at it and to, to be aware of your feelings mm -hmm. of like, this is making me feel stressed out, or this is making me feel less than, or this is making me feel upset. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I haven't. Um, heard people say this I've, I've not always but I love that you said like once you've allowed yourself to open it it's so hard and I've, I've said that to people like I don't it doesn't feel good I would you know we're not gonna lie to you like digging into this that's why I get why people run away however being on the other side of it 
There's mm-hmm. never fulfillment. There's never joy. There's never you seeing what you really want. It becomes more of that victim kind of thought process. Exactly. However, when you allow for yourself to go through the ugly of it, and it can just open your eyes, and but then sometimes it can't be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to work on it. But it's that's the that's the murk of it. Like regardless of anyone's faith base. The reality Mm -hmm. of it is that even with that, you're going through a journey and a walk and those journey Mm -hmm. and walks with discernment and correction, Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel well. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about growing just as an individual, if we're growing spiritually, growth doesn't always feel good. However, growth is necessary. Nothing about being in your comfort zone, which is, I always joked with um i've done like personal development therapy and all those other things over the years um and i would always say like the biggest thing about um your comfort zone is that it never is a space of fulfillment never it never is like you never are you in your comfort zone and you're like everything is amazing usually people have glasses on looking on the outside at everything else where and i feel like sometimes in your comfort zone that's where envy and mm-hmm. jealousy and doubt, sure. all of those negative connotations will fall into place. Is, is that something you see? I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. I think that personal growth and healing is truly the journey of a lifetime. Yeah. We are meant to continually evolve. Yeah. However, with that said, I do believe that not everyone is meant to rise. Yeah. There are people who are willing to accept the status quo, Mm -hmm. to stay stuck, to numb themselves to life, to go to sleep. But that's not the people listening to this. That's not you or I. Like there's a reason that you're here listening to this. And it's knowing, okay, if I'm going to go into the darkness, Mm -hmm. I want somebody to go in with me who has a flashlight Mm -hmm. and is going to show me the way. And who's been there before and has come out the other side, has helped other people come out the other side. Yeah. Because the other side, it's like short-term discomfort yeah. for long-term massive gain. Yeah. And that's what we forget. Like we, if we're staying in our comfort zones, that's long-term discomfort. Nothing. Yeah. Comfort zones are just familiar. Yeah. That's it. It's just familiarity. So if you're familiar with being broke, yeah. that's your comfort zone. If you're familiar with being single and not wanting to be, that's your comfort zone. Like yeah. if you're familiar with parents who like fought all the time and got evicted from your childhood home, that is your part of your story. Yeah. And that is familiar to you. And we will find consciously and subconsciously, we will find ways mm-hmm. to keep reinforcing our beliefs and our patterns because otherwise we're crazy, you know, like yeah. if we're not reinforcing our beliefs then we're wrong yeah. and we want to drill down on those beliefs and not be wrong yeah and I agree wholeheartedly and so for this other term that we often see like I know we've all had at some point saw the photo of fixed mindset growth mindset you've explained about the growth mindset I think we tiptoed around fixed but for people that aren't aware of fixed mindset how does that make how's fixed different from growth. So if growth is like, I'm awake to life and I'm in the driver's seat fixed is like, I'm asleep in the trunk and I don't know what's going on. (laughs) And sneaky, you guys, it's so sneaky because fixed is like, I'm just going through the motions. I'm in survival mode. I get up, I go to work, I come home, I eat dinner, I doomsday scroll, I watch Netflix, rinse and repeat. Mm. This is like fixed mindset. And fixed mindset is like, there is no space to even like contemplate anything. Contemplate like life being different. Contemplate, you know, what is making you feel the way that you feel. It's just very, I'm in the dark, I'm asleep. I'm likely numbing in some way. Numbing substances, obviously, but numbing can also be scrolling, TV, shopping, working out. There's a lot of ways that you can numb yourself. And Mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of ways you can avoid what is actually going on. 
So I think if you're like hearing this for the first time and you're like, hmm, fixed growth, it's like maybe ask yourself, like, am I looking at things? Mm -hmm. Am I avoiding things? So like, what am I avoiding? Yeah. Am I giving myself that space to contemplate or am I literally just going through the motions as to the point where like a year could pass and I could wake up and be like, what just happened? Yeah, no, I love that. And I love how you talked about numbing because I don't think a lot of people present to you how yeah. they're numbing. Um, yeah. And I was even speaking to someone like, cause I don't drink or any of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm out here feeling life like a hundred percent. Like we all have can fall victim to doing numbing in some kind of capacity. Um, but that's why I think it's important for you to work with someone to learn skills, to break out of that. So that you're even being present to masking because that's another term as well in yep. the therapy space. So like often, you know, I, I can catch myself when I am masking, learning how to remove the shame around the fact mm -hmm. of what even acknowledged it, you know, like what even started that. Because sometimes what happens is that with our mindset, there's triggers, like everyone's a little different, you know, you can speak on that a little bit more. Um, but a lot of I feel that often my masking or numbing that's non um, alcohol or any of that involved, it comes from a trigger. So and the trigger mm -hmm. doesn't have to be something drastic. It can be that I'm doing something outside of my comfort zone. So I'm scared. Exactly. So now I'm yeah, reaching out here. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're spot on. You're spot on. I feel like honestly too, what people don't realize with like the numbing and the avoidance is again, it's very sneaky. Yeah. Like I live this in this world all day, every day. And I, I can feel now at this point, I describe it like I'll get this like glimmer of something that I need to look at, whether that be a trigger or whether that just be getting out of my comfort zone and doing something new. And what I almost feel like is like ice descends. It's like mm -hmm. this ice comes in and wants to freeze it so that yeah. I can't see it anymore. Yeah. And I have to be cognizant of what that feels like because when I start feeling that ice come in, I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's something I need to see here. There's something that I need to do yeah. and work through or face or whatever because yeah. I'm trying to go somewhere and yeah. this ice is blocking me. And if I'm not super vigilant to it, I'll miss it. I love that. And that leads perfectly into the next question I wanted to talk about because, and I hope that for people that are watching, like you're seeing this in different areas of your life. Like we, we've spoke about it in your personal, we've spoken about how this may show up even in your professional. Um, and it's, it doesn't have to be an uncomfortable conversation. You know, everyone has different, um, family structures when it comes to these conversations, sometimes it can feel as if it's taboo to talk about this. And you think that strength is through enduring in an unproductive way. <laughs> there's a way to persevere and there's a way to, <laughs> to struggle through the mayhem. Um, but for anyone that's watching, what are some practical steps someone can actually start doing today to start shifting towards a growth mindset. Like kind of waking up and you're like looking around and you're like, my business isn't growing the way I want it to, or my dating life isn't going the way I want it to. My health isn't going the way I want it to my marriage, my kids, whatever. I would say do what I like to call like sprinkles. Let's start sprinkling mm -hmm. in just some space for you to observe and contemplate. So a lot of yeah. times people, when they're first waking up to this, they're like, wait, what? Like, this is something else I have to do. And really it's like, no, no, we get a little sprinkle, like on the top of the ice cream. Yeah. So just give yeah. yourself five minutes of actual five minutes of uninterrupted time where you like sit outside or you're walking the dog or you're putting on your makeup mm -hmm. or whatever, and just kind of contemplate and ask yourself, this is the most important question. I feel like we can all ask ourselves, how do I feel? Mm -hmm. How do I feel right now? Yeah. How do I feel about this thing? How yeah. do I feel about marketing myself on social media? How do I feel about going to this networking event? Does this feel good? Does this not feel good? Yeah. Contemplate this because mm -hmm. there is so much answer here. 
A yeah. big thing that I do with my clients is I help them to get out of their heads and back into their intuition, back into their feeling body. Mm -hmm. And so this is a question I have them ask themselves like all day, every day, even in terms of like, oh, it's lunchtime. What do I feel like having? Mm -hmm. Do I feel like having chicken salad? Do I feel like having tacos? Yeah. And then it's like, if you're like, oh, I feel like having tacos, run with it. Don't yeah. say, well, I guess I should have the chicken salad because it's going to go bad if I don't eat it today. Yeah. That's getting in your head. That's talking yourself out of things. And yes, this is a silly example of what to eat for lunch. But if you're talking yourself out of what you want for lunch, yeah. imagine what else you're talking yourself out of. That's so true. And I'm glad that you said that because it, it is a choice. Like, I think mm -hmm. that sometimes we can get so wrapped up in just living and not realize who the choices we're making willingly or unwillingly. And then also too, how taking it back to the interwoven, like depending on what you may have experienced in life, you may have been told that this chicken salad, like your choice may not even really be your choice. It may have been something exactly. based off. And that's the part about, Doing this work is super important because like one thing that I recently became present to was um, I was raised in a blended household and my um, father was Muslim. So I was raised in that um, and growing up as a young lady, it wasn't encouraged for me to embrace being feminine. So majority of my like I had clothes I wore with my mom who was Christian and I had clothes I wore at my father's house, you know, which, you know, everything was just covered. So as an adult now, as an adult woman who's 40 something years old, I'm constantly having to check myself on how I want to show up in the world as a feminine being, because that wasn't something that was nurtured. So if I see myself as a business professional that steps into certain rooms, it's okay to not want to be or look a certain way. That's fine. It's not about that. But it's like, am I willingly making this choice or am I still the little girl that was told not to embrace? So when we think about how we even show up in our own business, some of what we're bringing in is that child and we're making choices. So like, even when we're saying, how am I feeling? it may even be taking the time to think about like, where do those feelings even, what, what are those feelings even rooted in? Yeah, it does. I mean, this is, that's such a great example because we all can relate, I think, to that in yeah. different ways. Yeah. I, I remember hearing a story in like a personal growth setting that was like a little girl grew up and her mom would make a roast every Thanksgiving or whatever. Yeah. And her mom always cut off the ends of the yeah. roast. And so when she grew up, she started, she was cutting off the ends of the roast. Yeah. And then one day she was like, mom, why do we even cut off the ends? And the mom was like, well, I had to cut them off because the pan was too small. I don't know why you're cutting them off <laughs> because your pan is big enough to put it yeah. in there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, like we learn so much from our parents, from our teachers, from well-meaning people who love us. Yes. But we're no one here is perfect. We are yeah. all flawed individuals. And what worked well for like your father and what he really believed and like yeah. filled his soul yeah. might not be yeah. how you feel and what feels feeds your soul. And that's okay. Yeah. But if you don't take the space to contemplate this and become aware of this, you're going to keep playing out these patterns and they're not even yours. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I hope for anyone is watching that that was helpful because it is something that we are not always aware of of like you know some people that's the reason why they don't like going to networking events so they don't like they don't realize that what they're bringing into those spaces is, is that childlike version of them not really the adult version of them themselves and what they really want to accomplish in their life so i think that that's super um important so for you like how do you try to coach your clients to overcome self-doubt and limiting beliefs that are holding them back. So I really believe in going to the root and extracting this thread once and for all. I am not about quick fixes. I am not about band-aids and I'm not about like blanket approaches to everything. Yeah. Like I want to know what makes Jesse, Jesse, like yeah. why, why are you wearing this outfit? Like yeah. why are you showing up this way? Like yeah. what is it about you? 
that is making you believe these things? Mm -hmm. And then what is more empowering to you that feels like maybe you're stretching it a little bit, but also feels realistic. Mm -hmm. So with clients, we really go, I mean, it's a journey like yeah. this. It, I love it. I think it's so much fun. And I, when you sit here and watch people say like, oh, like I'm cutting the roast just because my mom did it. It's like, you almost like see something leave their energy field. Yeah. Like they free up, they light up. It yeah. gives them other lenses yeah. to view life through. So we just, we really get in there. This is, this is the real deal. That's good to know because it's not intended. Like if it was so like, jumping through um, the garden with wildflowers and mm -hmm. everyone would be doing it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, exactly. everyone <laughs> is going to. Exactly. And it's not the same for everybody yeah. either. Yeah. So we have to figure out like, well, what is it for you? Yeah. And where do you want to go with this? I mean, mm -hmm. it's such this, these kind of processes, it's so transformative. I mean, it will quite literally change your life. Like I am a different person now mm -hmm. than I was before I started my personal growth journey. And the thing with starting a personal growth journey is a lot of times people start it with like, you know, reading a self-help book or something like that, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. read tons of books, but those are the blanket statements. And a lot of times you don't know how to apply that to your yeah. life or yeah. you just flat out forget. Yeah. You read a book and you're like, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm going to start doing this. And then you do it for like a week and then life gets lifey or you hit that obstacle and yeah. then you forget this ever even happened and you go back to your default settings yeah. and your default settings are often being managed by the wounded child, mm -hmm. not by your authentic self. Yes, I agree. And for the people that you've worked with, what would you say is like the common hesitancy that people face when it even comes to like doing this kind of work? Because I'm sure there are some walls that people face when it comes to, you know, or even the better question would be like, what have you found to be the common denominator for someone to realize like, wow, I probably should be talking to someone on improving my mindset. Um, what do you find is like that aha moment where sometimes people are like, okay, I need to work with someone. I need to work with you, Ashley. Yeah, I think the aha moment, it's either they just feel totally blah mm -hmm. and exhausted and burned out and they're tired of feeling that way. Yeah. Or something big happens in their life. Like <laughs> they go through a divorce, they go through a health event, or they're contemplating something big. Like they're mm -hmm. contemplating starting a business. They're mm -hmm. contemplating moving across the country. And they're like, I just, I, I don't know. And my clients are go-getters, you know, like entrepreneurs, we're go-getter types. Yeah. So they know how to make things happen. So when things are not happening for them, they're like, wait, what? Like, normally I know how to make decisions. Normally I know how to make things happen. Why am I struggling with this? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is really like the indicators of if this isn't flowing with ease, yeah. you're hitting something. And I'm not saying life is always going to be easy, but usually it ends up being a lot easier than like you think it's going to be because yeah. you start operating. Once you go through this process, you start, start operating from a place of more alignment mm. versus like doing just to do and mm. spinning your wheels and getting yeah. nowhere. Oh, I like that. And cause it's one, of, and I think it's almost like when you're in the flow of attacking mindset, you almost even learn to acknowledge when yes. and like po it almost gives positive um affirmation yeah it reaffirms you in a positive way um because sometimes what happens is that when we're stuck and we're fixed we assume that everything could go bad and mm -hmm. that's just our and that's the mind but that's what like why do our minds just naturally just go there it's the whole flight or flight thing, essentially. And I'm like, dang it. I get it for like wildlife, you know, but now I don't. <laughs> We've evolved. I'm like, we evolved. Like, why is this still happening? Uh <laughs> I know. I mean, really, the brain can easily be rewired yeah. when you're doing things kind of like the right way and working with someone that knows how to kind of rewire that negativity. But I think that something that we, really need to be doing 
is celebrating our wins. Like we definitely need to be celebrating when the positive things happen, when we achieve our goals, when we even get close to achieving our goals, because I do feel like the universe is always trying to give you evidence. And so take that evidence. Oh no, why is it not?